Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, this first Saturday of the year, we entrust again ourselves, our prayers, and our intentions to the heart of our Blessed Mother. May she continue to intercede for us and bring us always closer to her Son. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for his pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who were pleased to shine forth with new light through the coming of your only begotten Son, grant, we pray, that just as he was pleased to share our bodily form through the childbearing of the Virgin Mary, so we too may one day merit to become companions 
in His kingdom of grace, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, we have this confidence in God that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us in regard to whatever we ask, we know that we have asked Him for is ours. If anyone sees his brother sinning, if the sin is not deadly, he should pray to God, and he will give him life. This is the only for those whose sin is not deadly. There is such a thing as deadly sin, about which I do not say that you should pray. All wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that is not deadly. We know that no one begotten by God sins, but the one begotten by God he protects, and the evil one cannot touch him. We know that we belong to God, and the whole world is under the power of the evil one. We also know that the Son of God has come and has given us discernment to know the one who is true. And we are in the one who is true, in His Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Children, be on your guard against idols. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord takes delight in His people. The Lord takes delight in His people. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their Maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their King. The Lord takes delight in His people. Let them praise His name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to Him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves His people, and He adorns the lowly with victory. The Lord takes delight in His people. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their crouches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all His faithful. Alleluia. The Lord takes delight in His people. Please stand. A great prophet has arisen in our midst, and God has visited his people. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. 
Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine without knowing where it came from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely, an inferior one. But you have kept the good wine until now. But did Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs at Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, tomorrow we will celebrate the Epiphany of the Lord, the manifestation and revelation of Jesus. And the Gospel today the wedding at Cana is deeply connected with what we call the three epiphanies of Jesus. Today we read about the wedding at Cana in Galilee, where according to our gospel reading is the beginning of the revelation of the sign of his power and glory. Tomorrow, we will read about the epiphany of Jesus in the manger when His glory was manifested to the Magi. And on Monday, the feast of the baptism of Jesus, we will hear the Father Himself revealing the glory of Jesus in the baptism when he himself would say that this is my beloved son. The three epiphanies of Jesus, the wedding at Cana, the epiphany at the manger, and the epiphany at the baptism. And today, my dear brothers and sisters, we are reminded of the closeness of Mary to this epiphany. It is Mary who leads us closer so that Jesus may be manifested in our lives, so that Jesus may be manifested in our intentions and prayers. Ngayong araw po na ito, unang Sabado, sa taon na ito ay binasa natin ang pagpapakilala ni Jesus sa pamamagitan ng intercession, sa pamamagitan na rin ng panalangin ng ating mahal na ina. Magpapakilala po sa atin si Jesus sa pamamagitan din ng paglapit natin sa mahal na birhen. Ano man po ang inilalapit natin sa Kanya sa araw na ito ng unang Sabado ng taon, ay sa pamamagitan nito makikilala lalo natin si Jesus. At magpapakilala si Jesus 
lalo na ang kanyang mukha, ang kanyang kadakilaan sa pamamagitan ng panalangin ng ating mahal na ina. This first Saturday of the year, we come near to Mary like those people who came to her at the wedding in Cana. And we believe that Jesus will manifest to us His power and glory. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue this celebration of the Mass, let us come near to Our Lady. And we know that through the prayers of Our Lady, Jesus will manifest to us His power. Amen. Please stand. Confident that we can expect the same compassion shown by Jesus to the newlyweds at Cana in Galilee, we make our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For every petition, let us say, Father, fill us with your blessings. Father, fill us with your blessings. That the Church may always give her best, as Christ gave the best wine to the newlyweds. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father fill, fill us, us with, with your, your blessings. blessings. That couples who are planning to marry may turn to Jesus to strengthen their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father fill, fill us with, with your blessings. blessings. That married couples whose relationships have turned dull and sour, may rediscover the presence of Jesus, who is the source of all love. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father fill, fill us, us with, with your, your blessings. blessings. That the sick or housebound may experience that the healing power of God's love in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father fill, fill us with, with your blessings. blessings that those who have died in Christ may enjoy His eternal banquet in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father fill, fill us, us with, with your blessings. blessings. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions and for all the intentions offered in this Mass. God, our Father, we ask you to hear our prayers, spoken and unspoken, so that we may experience your Son's gentle and loving presence in our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours 
may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, Though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours. And begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. Save us, a Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of His death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Benedict XVI, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your Son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver, deliver us from, from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Please stand. May your people, O Lord, whom you guide and sustain in many ways, experience both now and in the future the remedies which you bestow, that with the needed solace of things that pass away, they may strive with ever-deepened trust for things eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tomorrow is the Solemnity of the Epiphany of the Lord. Our Masses here at the Manila Cathedral will be at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and 6 p.m. We invite everyone to celebrate this great feast of the Epiphany of the Lord here at the Manila Cathedral. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.